The lecture today is about the derivatives of trigonometric functions. Okay, uh, we have uh, six trigonometric uh, functions, sine, cosine, tangent, and the reciprocals. We want to find out the formula for derivative of uh, these functions, and that's going to add six formulas to the table of formulas we have. Uh, to give you these formulas, I need two limits, uh, which I'll state now and prove later on. Uh, just to keep the material short and simple, I just state the following limits. One of them is that the limit of sine of an angle, let's call it h, for a reason you will see later on, it's just the same famous h we had before. Uh, limit of sine of h over h, as h goes to 0, is just 1. And the other formula we are going to need, which again I'm going to prove later on, is that the limit of 1 minus cosine of h over h as h goes to 0 that is just 0 so we have these two important limits <coughs> so th it would be a good exercise you know, for you to go ahead and experiment with this using your calculator to see this is experimentally true. Just take h to be a small angle uh, and uh, let h go to zero and you see these two appear to be correct by your calculation. Now first item that we are going to go through is uh, derivative for sine of x. for uh, the sine function, I might say. Well, we are going to prove the following, that the derivative of sine of x with respect to x is cosine of x. How do we do this? <coughs> well, if I want to take a derivative, derivative with respect to x of sine of x or in other words in the other notation would have been sine of x prime that is the limit of you remember the definition of limit sine of you just go away from x a little bit and find out how much did the function change divide by change in x and let the change in x go to zero so we have to calculate this limit. Now I remind you of, of one of the formulas for the sine of sum of angles. Let's just write it in a different color here. Remember sine of sum of two angles. Let's just write x plus h. That is sine of x cosine of h plus cosine of x sine of h. So keep that in mind from the list of the formulas for uh, trigonometric functions. So I'm going to have that simplified here. Limit of, instead of sine of x plus h, I'm just going to write this sine of x plus cosine of x sine of h minus sine of x the whole thing is divided by h and h is going to 0. Writing again this is limit of <coughs> I am going to uh, sort the terms that I have here you see that I have this and this one both of them have sine of x in it so I might as well factor the sine of x then I'm left with 
cosine of h, then minus 1. <clears throat> the other term, I just uh, write it uh, separately. I let this one to go to 0, and then uh, the other one, limit of cosine of x times sine of h over h this one also as h goes to 0 if I can figure out these limits individually and add them up well that's going to be equal to the limit of the previous expression now I pay attention to the following when h is our variable in this limit process the sine of x or cosine of x can be taken outside they don't there's no reason for them to leave them inside so I take this outside this is sine of x then I have a limit of cosine of h minus 1 over h as h goes to 0 and this one cosine comes out and I have limit of sine of h over h as h goes to 0 now we are going to go back to the first uh, statement I made regarding two limits that we keep using here. Those two limits are going to be used for calculating just these two limits here. What are the limits we stated at the beginning? We stated without proof. We will do that later on. Sine of h over h approaches 1. 1 minus cosine of h over h approaches 0. Of course from this you can also write the limit of cosine of h minus 1 over h also approaches 0. This is just off from the other one by a minus. So you can pick either of them and use that. So sine over h is 1. 1 minus cosine over h will be 0. We are going to use that here. This approaches 1. This approaches 0. So our answer is going to be whatever this is times 0. That's just going to be 0. And 1 times cosine of x is just cosine of x. So what is it that we proved? We proved that sine of x prime is equal to cosine of x. Okay, that's uh, one formula that's going to be added to our table of formulas for uh, basic functions. We are going to go ahead, make uh, five more formulas just like this one. And we have to do four cosine, tangent, and so on. We are going to practice with the limit operations of this type, plus uh, differentiation formulas we have learned in the previous couple of lectures. OK, N next uh, problem uh, this is a proof that the derivative of cosine of x is the derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x. Let's see how do we do that. So if I want to take a derivative of cosine of x, by definition, I have to take this limit. This is a limit of cosine of. I move away from x by small angle h, then figure out how much I've moved away, divide the whole thing by changing a x and let that change go to 0. Now again we need uh, one formula from sum of angles. Let's just go ahead and remind ourselves what was cosine of x plus h. Do you remember that from the previous uh, review we had? It's cosine of x, cosine of h, minus sine of x, sine of h. So we go ahead and continue this limit here. We so have limit of h going to 0 of. So I just go ahead and open this thing up. Just copy this through cosine of x, cosine of h, minus sine of x, sine of h, minus cosine of x over h. And then this is same as a limit of h going to 0 of. What do we do here? Again, collect like terms. Uh, here, these two, I put them together. I'll have cosine of x, factor cosine of x, cosine of h minus 1. 
from these two I factor cosine of x and then the other one just stays as it is minus sine of x sine of h over h okay we're just gonna break this into two limits if those limits exist then um, that uh, resulting limit will be uh, same as what we are looking for here limit of cosine of x I'll have cosine of h minus 1 over h and then here the new thing is that we have this minus minus the limit of sine of x sine of h over h both of these things of course h is going to 0 in the previous exercise I took the sine and cosine outside but uh, here we are going to skip that we just learned our lesson that uh, the sine of h over h this approach is 1 as h goes to 0 this is just some constant for the time being cosine of h minus 1 over h that one also we mentioned that goes to 0 so whatever cosine is doing since it's bounded and constant times 0 this is going to be 0 so this whole thing is going to be 0 this is sine of x because this went to 1 and I have a minus in front so it just becomes minus sine of x so uh, to abbreviate cosine of x prime became minus sine of x one way to remember this uh, negative in front of this function is by remembering what the graph of cosine looks like but then of course that requires you to remember the graph of cosine uh, I have placed uh, several links that you can go and practice your knowledge of uh, these pictures and let me just quickly mention something to you uh, over you have to go over the uh, section of trigonometry and you convince yourself that the graph of sine looks like this and the graph of cosine looks like this color so this was cosine and this one was sine well, how does this graph help you to uh, remember any formulas they don't seem to be all that connected to each other uh, look at this green curve the graph of cosine here at the beginning is, is falling is that right the green curve is going down so its slope is going to be negative so I need this negative sign here that shows to me that the cosine of x is going to have a negative slope this is minus sine of x sine of x itself is positive here in the first quadrant cosine is dropping and to compare the two of them you would need this negative sign <coughs> at any rate it's very crucial that you either uh, memorize or understand hopefully you understand where this minus coming from let's just uh, write the two rules that we have here next to each other so that uh, we can uh, infer various other formulas from them so for sine of x we found that derivative of sine is cosine and derivative of cosine is minus sine really all you need are these two formulas uh, to derive the other trick uh, formulas you can just use these and at, at any time if you forget the other formulas we are going to derive you can always come back to these two and build everything from scratch but of course it would be important to build up speed and just remember all these formulas let's go next we are going to talk about derivative of tangent we can go ahead do the similar kind of discussion we had uh, but just to go ahead and practice our other differentiation formulas I go ahead and say do you remember what the tangent itself is in terms of these two functions we have studied 
Okay, I hope you have gone through your trick review. You remember tangent, one of those ratio identities says tangent is same as sine over cosine. So if I want to differentiate tangent, I might as well differentiate sine over cosine. Well, now I have jumped from uh, perhaps a frying pan into the fire. I have changed this thing to this uh, quotient. Now I'm stuck with applying the quotient formulas. I go ahead and pay that price now. What does the quotient formula say? Take a derivative of numerator, multiply by that denominator, and then from that subtract numerator as it is, times the derivative of the denominator, and divide the whole thing by the square of the denominator. So now, if you didn't want to deal with tangent directly, now you have to instead deal with the quotient formula here. We go ahead, derivative of sine, we remember was cosine. And derivative of cosine, you remember was minus sine. And denominator is cosine squared. We put the power on top of the name of the function. That's legitimate way of writing these powers. But numerator becomes cosine squared. And these minuses cancel. And I get sine squared uh, divided by cosine squared of x. Well, now we need another identity. The basic identity, Pythagorean identity, is a sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So that is same as 1 over cosine squared of x. Another reciprocal identity tells you that 1 over cosine is same as secant. So this is secant squared of let me write it, x. OK, so this is our favorite format for writing this, tangent of x prime became secant squared of x. We could have written 1 over cosine squared. Uh, that's going to be the flavor of this section, multiple ways of writing the same thing. OK, we learned about tangent. Uh, who else is there? Uh, let's go ahead of the six trig functions. We have covered sine, cosine, tangent. Let's go after secant. What if I want to differentiate secant? Well, secant, I remember secant is 1 over cosine of x. Okay, so that's one of the uh, ratio identities we discussed in the previous lecture. Secant is 1 over cosine. So to differentiate 1 over cosine, just good exercise here to practice a fraction where the numerator is just a constant. See what happens. If you want to apply the quotient rule, it's fine. You have to take a derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus numerator times the de derivative of the denominator divided by square of the denominator. Well, I go ahead and say, uh, be careful about this. Derivative of a constant is 0. So this whole thing just drops out common mistake to think is derivative of 1 is just 1. Derivative is 0, so that falls out. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. Two negative signs cancel out. And I get sine of x over cosine squared of x. That would have been a good answer. Just customary to write it in all sorts of other ways. One way of doing this is to write it as sine of x over cosine of x times another 1 over cosine of x. I just split the denominator. Again, I remind myself from ratio identities. This is tangent of x. And the 1 over cosine is a secant of x. So here is our final form of this. Secant prime is tangent secant. Who else is left? Well, we have cosecant. Cosecant, it's a 
good idea for you to stop uh, right now and go ahead and derive the formula for cosecant yourself and come back and compare to what I have, uh, what I'm producing here. So, okay, so please do stop and come back. Uh, listening to me for too long is not going to be good for you. Cosecant of x is so 1 over sine of x. I have to differentiate that. So first, we are converting everything to sine and cosine because those are the things we are more familiar with and we work with them a lot more than we work with these other ones. So it's a standard trick to convert everything to that language and then develop it from there. Okay. From the last exercise, we learned that if you have a constant in numerator, that the first step of differentiation just produces zero for you, you might as well skip that. Maybe I go ahead and say it one more time, and after that we are going to just skip. Derivative of numerator times denominator minus numerator, which is just one, times the derivative of the denominator over square of the denominator. So this is zero. Derivative of sine is cosine. So I'm left with minus cosine of x over sine square of x. Okay, if you didn't listen to me before here, again I advise you to stop it here and just do this splitting like we did in the previous exercise. What's going to happen? minus cosine of x over sine of x times 1 over sine of x. But minus cosine over sine is minus cotangent of x. On 1 over sine, oh, what's 1 over sine? That is same as cosecant. So here's our final uh, format for this. Cosecant of x differentiated is going to give us minus cotangent times cosecant. Who is left? <clears throat> One function left. Cotangent of x differentiated is same as. Now you have two options. Write it as a reciprocal of sine or write it as cosine over. Excuse me, write it as a reciprocal of tangent or write it as cosine over sine. Either of them is fine. Uh, again, derivative of numerator times denominator minus uh, Okay, we had uh, derivative of numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative of denominator divided by denominator squared. <clears throat> so that is minus sine of x times another sine of x, that is sine squared. Cosine times another cosine, that is cosine squared, divided by sine squared of x. Uh, minus sine squared minus corner sine squared. What is that? Minus 1 over sine squared of x. 1 over sine is cosecant. So here I am taking really cosecant of x, squaring it, and then making it negative. So our final formula here is cotangent of x prime is minus cosecant square of x. So let's uh, put everything here in one uh, box. What did we learn? Here are the important formulas. Sine of x prime is cosine of x. Cosine of x prime is minus sine of x tangent of x prime is secant square of x and then the reciprocals we had cosecant let me see if I can 
fit them all on the same page. Cosecant of x prime that was minus cosecant of x cotangent of x reciprocal of this was secant of x prime that became secant of x tangent of x and finally cotangent of x prime that was minus cosecant square of x okay so we have six formulas added to our table what table am I talking about um, so far we have the following uh, items on our table we had uh, let me make it write my table in the same fashion as before if you have x to power of n in your differentiating with respect to x you get n x to power of n minus 1 what else have you learned so far exponential of x prime that was the easiest one it's just exponential of x similar to this you had some other formulas as well just to remind you 2 to the x prime we obtained this experimentally uh, so it was let's write we will write the exact formula later on it was almost like 0.7 times 2 to the power of x similar to this we experimented with 3 to the power of x the derivative of that was approximately 1.1 times 3 to the power of x <clears throat> and so on we had some general uh, formulas the linearity the power rule the product rule and the quotient rule let me just quickly mention those if you have one function called f another function called g and you are multiplying them with some constants a and b and then you differentiating them you can do the differentiations first and combine them multiply them later so in these exercises I'm writing here a b n and so on these are constants they do not involve the variable of differentiation x we had the product rule which was derivative of first times second was first derivative of the second one then you had the quotient rule that we just used uh, repeatedly and that was derivative of numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative of denominator divided by denominator squared then I had some additional rules for mixture of power in these for the power itself we went through derivative of a power was the exponent times the function to one less than the old exponent times the derivative of the function itself so you have learned uh, these uh, formulas so far and you are going to practice a variety of problems at the end of this section which is going to take you through a tour of all of these things essentially and uh, we are going to have more formulas later on uh, one more of this type and plenty more formulas of this type so just give, to give you a warning ahead of time you do need to practice these things over and over again so that you are both fast and accurate with respect to this type of differentiation remember differentiation is going to be just one step of uh, a multi-step problems later on typical problem in calculus could easily have uh, six to ten steps and that would be just one of them imagine what's going to happen if you get it wrong on the very first step everything after that is going to collapse 
so make sure you do practice these and uh, make sure your speed is improved until you can differentiate any of these problems in these sections in less than a minute or so okay at the beginning of our lecture I promised that uh, the whole thing revolves around two limit operations and to prove these things I need several inequalities so we are entering into the second mode of this lecture the, the more substantial and the more basic items uh, those of you interested in the roots of mathematics and want to understand things as opposed to just uh, uh, work with the formula then you need to pay attention to what we do next okay so let's go ahead and Uh, dig in a little bit deeper. So next I'm going to talk about several important inequalities in trigonometry Okay. Uh, ju just to uh, understand these inequalities themselves, we need a couple of items from our uh, review section last time. Remember, if you have a circle and you in that circle you have some angle, uh, let's draw it by some other color. Here's an angle, let's say angle theta that angle has an arc in front of it that arc let's call it of length L radius of the circle let's call it R these three items were connected to each other what was the connection Do you remember L was equal to radius times theta uh, theta is and us as usual in radians this is really the definition of theta in radians next uh, formula we had this is the length of the arc we had the formula for the area of the slice or the, or the area of the sector do you remember what that one was uh, I told you a way of remembering it that would be reminiscent of things you have done in high school which is base times height divided by 2 this is base is L height is R divided by 2 but L itself is R theta so I can just write it uh, R squared times theta divided by 2 okay these are some of the basic uh, items next basic item we need to remember is that if I draw a unit circle here's a unit circle and I draw the coordinate system here's a coordinate system suppose this is my x-axis and say this is my y-axis and if I have an angle theta here so here's angle theta Now I will be able to read sine and cosine easily off of this picture. Yeah, I hope you have looked at some of those uh, Java applets that show this thing uh, much nicer than what I'm drawing for you and in a dynamic way. But right now, I'll just go ahead. If I drop a perpendicular here, this piece what is that? But if you write a ratio of cosine of theta excuse me if you write cosine of theta that's going to be a ratio adjacent to the hypotenuse what is the hypotenuse this is you're taking it to be unit circle radius 1 so ratio of this to the hypotenuse will be cosine of theta so that itself has to be cosine of theta so that's the easiest way of visualizing cosine. Draw a circle of radius 1. 
draw your angle in it, position on the x-axis, find the x-coordinate of this point. Here is the x-coordinate. That is exactly cosine of theta. One more round. Let's uh, just remind ourselves of a similar fact. Again, I draw the unit circle and I draw my angle. I'm just trying to make sure that picture doesn't get too crowded, so I'm doing it again. This is the angle theta. Now I dropped, dropped this perpendicular this way. Now I try to read this vertical that is same as this one. It's just a y coordinate of this point. Well, I claim that is same as sine of theta. Why? Because sine of theta is a ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 1, so the opposite has to be just sine of theta. So if you have an angle position in standard uh, position in the unit circle, and you drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, the x-coordinate of this point is just cosine of theta, and the y-coordinate of that point is uh, sine of theta. Round 3. Again, review of trigonometry. We haven't gone to the inequality itself yet. If I draw an angle here, angle theta, and drop a draw a perpendicular from this place, now I claim that this length from here to here is just same as tangent of theta. Why? Again, remember that there, this radius here is 1 tangent of this angle is a ratio of opposite to the adjacent. Since adjacent is 1, opposite has to be just tangent of theta. And uh, finally, uh, for the last round, if I have a circle and I have placed an angle in standard position inside of this, If this angle is theta, then the length of this arc from here to here, what is that? Let me see if you remember from all that we have talked about. From here to here, given the fact that the radius is 1, what would this uh, length be, the length of the arc? Well, the length of the arc is just theta itself. Why? Because, remember, length of the arc is equal to the radius times the size of the angle. So if you're saying the angle is theta radians in, and the circle is of radius 1, that means the size of the arc in front of it, that itself is theta. So these are going to be our major players. Here's a cosine, a sine, tangent, and theta. We need to be comfortable with these things and be quick, uh, be quick uh, talking about them. Okay, going on toward the inequalities themselves. First, I'll try to prove the following. Uh, first item that I'll try to prove is uh, I'm going to prove that for an angle in the first quadrant, sine of theta is less than the angle of theta itself, and that is less than tangent of theta. We said theta is in the first quadrant. To say theta is in the first quadrant, uh, let's just write it out theta in the first quadrant.
OK. How do I prove this? Let me see if I can draw a big circle so that we can see everything. I really need just half of a circle, so I just draw that section of it. Suppose this is a circle. Doesn't look quite like one, but that's fine. Uh, here is my x axis. Here's my angle theta. We are taking this to be unit circle, so the radius of this is taken to be 1. I go ahead and drop a perpendicular here. How tall is this? So here's a question for you. In terms of quantities that I have written, what is the length of this uh, yellow piece? Remember this hypotenuse is 1. The angle is theta. What trig function will be equal to that? Well, if you write sine of theta, sine of theta will be ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. So, so, uh, hypotenuse is 1. This has to be sine of theta. I'm going to continue this. and uh, drop another perpendicular here. How tall is this one? Maybe you want to stop, think about it, and come back. Again, from here to here is 1. From this point to this point it's just a radius of the circle which is 1. So what's that going to make this one to be? That of course has to be tangent of theta. Now uh, let me give some names to these things so that I can easily refer to them. Suppose this is point O. I call this say point H and this is say A and this is B. I say area of triangle <clears throat> O A H is so I'm going to connect these so I have O A H what's the area of this area I can say base which is 1 times the height which is sine of theta divided by 2. So that is sine of theta divided by 2. Did you follow the reasoning? Base is 1. Height is sine of theta. Multiply them. Divide by 2. <clears throat> Next question. What is the area of the triangle OHB? So OBH area of the triangle, well, let's go back here and look, you tell me what's the area of this right, this is a right triangle, what's the area of it, O, H, B, ah, one side is 1, the other one is tangent of theta, and uh, you can say it is easily tangent of theta divided by 2. Now, area of uh, the sector O A H. What do you mean by sector? I mean that this is a slice that looks like a slice of pizza. O A H all the way up to this blue line. Not the black one, but going as far as the blue one. What is that area? Again, pause for a moment. I guess I've been saying that so many times you're probably tired of me by now. Uh, we have mentioned that formula already. Area of a slice, square of radius times angle over 2. Here, 
radius is 1. Angle is theta. Square of radius is going to be 1 again times theta over 2. So that is just theta over 2. Now I ask you to compare these areas. Who is bigger or who is smaller? It's rather obvious. Uh, and we have taken the angle in to be in the first quadrant, so we don't have to deal with any negative quantities or anything like that. Obviously, the area of OAH triangle is less than the area of the sector, which is less than the area of this outside triangle. So let's write that down. Area of triangle <coughs> OAH is less than area of sector OAH which is less than area of triangle OBH this one was sine of theta over 2 this one is just theta over 2 and this one is tangent of theta over 2 well, I'll just go ahead and multiply everything by 2, and that is going to give me the identity that I wanted to prove. So I'll have, therefore, sine of theta is less than theta, less than tangent of theta, so long as theta is inside of quadrant 1. Let me write this thing again. Uh. <clears throat> okay. Next identity that we want to prove is the following. Prove that cosine of theta is less than sine of theta over theta is less than 1. Again, theta in quadrant 1. Well, <coughs> we don't really need to uh, do anything special f for this inequality. It's really uh, rewriting of that one uh, modified slightly is going to give us this identity. So I go about it like this. I say we just proved that sine of theta is less than theta, less than tangent of theta. We know by now that this is the case. Next, we go and say, well, let me bring cosine into the picture. How can I bring cosine into this picture? Rewrite tangent. So we are going to rewrite sine of theta is less than theta less than this is sine of theta instead of tangent sine over cosine I see the sine in the middle so I go ahead divide all by sine so if I divide by sine what happens let's write it all out uh, maybe I just indicate it by instead of rewriting again, I'm just dividing by sine of theta. So I'm dividing this by sine of theta. I'm dividing this by sine of theta. Okay. So I can go ahead and simplify things. I'll have a sine over sine is 1. This is theta over sine of theta. And here sines cancel and I have 1 over cosine of theta. It's kind of like the inequality that was mentioned here, except things are upside down. Uh, so what can I do? I take reciprocal turn all the fractions upside down. Remember this one is just same as 1 over 1. If you have uh, several inequalities in shape of fraction and you turn everything upside down, the directions are going to flip also. So turn this thing upside down is just still 1. When you turn this one upside down, it becomes sine of theta over theta. And when you turn this one upside down, that just becomes cosine of theta. 
and that is the other inequality we just mentioned here is the proof of it therefore I just had written it uh, in reverse but that's the same inequality so we prove this what do we get out of these uh, inequalities we have done so far at the very beginning of the lecture we started by saying uh, limit of sine of h over h as h goes equal to 0 it is 1 do you see how that comes out of this inequality I say notice so we, here we want to prove this limit assertion we made at the beginning we say sine of h over h if h is a positive quantity excuse me if h is in the first quadrant I know that is in between 1 and cosine of h I know about this inequality I just proved it now as h goes to 0 cosine of h goes to 1 is that right as h goes to 0 cosine of h goes to 1 and by the squeeze theorem we had at the beginning of the semester this side is going to 1 that side is going to 1 in the middle whatever is stuck in the middle that has to go to go to 1 so this tells us that the sine of h over h also goes to 1 now all of our discussion was geared to the angle being in the first quadrant but you can easily rearrange this thing and see that it's also true for a negative angle in the fourth quadrant cosine is the same in the first and fourth quadrant sine becomes negative but so does h and so this ratio doesn't change either so if h is negative the same inequality still applies and the limit is true for h going to 0 from either positive or negative side so that con uh, brings us to the proof of this limit statement okay to the next uh, inequality okay now we want to go ahead and prove our uh, next inequality uh, next inequality says that uh, so we want to prove that the 1 minus cosine of theta is less than theta times sine of theta over 2 and that is larger than theta over 2 times sine of theta this is going to be a little bit trickier than the previous one uh, let's go ahead and get started again I'm going to need a, a big circle here so let me I'll just uh, draw a quarter circle that would be enough okay that is uh, hopefully looking like a circle <coughs> yeah here's my s center of the circle I am going to make an angle again so that's going to be angle theta and uh, as before I am going to drop a perpendicular you remember we said from here to here given that the radius is 1 this always you are in the unit circle radius is 1 so what is the length of this purple line 
that's going to be, of course, cosine of theta. And uh, this other part from here to here, how long is the green portion? Well, if the radius is 1 and up to here is cosine theta, what is left here is 1 minus cosine theta. Also uh, remember that uh, this uh, arc from here to here, how long is that? That's just theta itself. <coughs> this one I forgot to write, that is sine of theta. Now I need one additional line here, let's see if we can find another color. This one can be written in terms of theta as well, but I just go ahead and call it uh, length L. And uh, one more thing. Can you guess what is this angle? All the geometry you took in high school is going to be used here now. Uh, can you figure out what that angle is. But let me uh, remind you of some basic fact in uh, geometry. You can do it one of two ways. If this is angle is theta, this is an isosceles triangle, you can figure out this angle and from that go ahead and figure out what this complementary angle of that angle is going to be. Here is a bit uh, perhaps easier way of looking at the same thing. <coughs> First, remember that if you have an angle and you have another one whose sides are perpendicular to this, okay, if you have two angles like this, what is the relationship between these two? Of course, they are equal because both of them are complementary angle of these two equal angles. These are equal and these two are complementary to these two equal angles so they themselves are equal or as they say in geometry they are congruent to each other <coughs> now in this picture if I let me draw another one so that that picture doesn't get too crowded um, if I have change my colors Here is my isosceles triangle. I have dropped uh, perpendicular here. This angle is theta. The question is how big is this one? And the answer is that that is half of the central angle. One way to see that is to drop a perpendicular here. that perpendicular is going to divide the central angle here to two equal portions. It's going to be theta over 2 and so is this one. This angle and this angle are going to be equal because their sides are perpendicular to each other just like what I mentioned here. So that, that angle becomes the theta over 2. So after all this discussion what we have here is that this angle is theta over 2. <coughs> Okay, the problem is essentially 90% done. Uh, all we have to do is to write uh, several uh, relationship between these sides that we have discovered here. First one that I'm going to write, I'm going to look at this uh, triangle here. And here I'm going to write what is tangent of, uh, maybe I better write a stronger color, tangent of that angle. A tangent is ratio of the opposite to the adjacent. It's a 1 minus cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. I go ahead and uh, cross multiply this. I write tangent of theta over 2 times sine of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine of theta. By the way, those of you who have taken a good course in trigonometry might remember this as one of your identities you have learned there. <coughs> okay. Now, I say, do you remember 
that tangent is larger than the angle itself. Hope you didn't forget that. Let's go back. I show you that we just did this thing a few minutes ago. <clears throat> Sorry. Tangent of an angle is larger than the angle itself. Is that right? So, if instead of tangent of the the angle theta over two, I just write theta over two times sine of theta. I'm going to get a quantity less than that, which is equal to this. So, therefore, I get so far that tan theta over two times sine of theta is going to be less than one minus cosine theta. So, so far we have proved half of the inequality we wanted to prove. We wanted to prove this is less than that. We have done half the job. Part two. Part two, I say, in the same triangle, uh, I can write sine of this angle is equal to ratio of opposite, which is 1 minus cosine theta, divided by hypotenuse, which is L. Let me see if I can squeeze it on the side of, uh, maybe I can write it here. So I have sine of theta over 2, here's the picture, sine of this angle is equal to opposite, which is 1 minus cosine theta divided by L. I just go ahead and cross multiply again, so I'll have 1 minus cosine theta is equal to uh, L times sine of theta over 2. So I cross multiplied L times sine of theta over 2. I wrote it here, and this is 1 minus cosine theta. Now look at this picture. What's the relationship between L, this length of this line, and length of this arc? Who is bigger? Obviously, theta is bigger than L. There are ways of proving it, but I guess on the pictures that's sufficient. L is a straight line, a theta is a curve, and the length of a straight line is always less than the length of a curve that connects the same two endpoints. So I just say it like that and say 1 minus cosine of theta. So theta is larger than L. So if I write theta here, this becomes bigger than left hand side, sine of theta over 2. So what I have here is 1 minus cosine theta. So upshot of all of this thing is 1 minus cosine of theta on one hand is bigger than this and on the other hand is less than this one. Very interesting inequality. Okay, that is what we promised we wanted to prove and it just took uh, a few lines to prove, of course, it had a substantial background in geometry. We had to know about unit circle very well. Okay, what is the use of this uh, inequality? Again, let me take you back to the beginning of the lecture. Beginning of lecture, we had made a big use of the fact that this limit is zero or that for the derivative of sine and cosine. Where, where does that come from? Well, that's going to come from the inequality we just created. Let's go ahead and do this. <clears throat> I divide, so to do the following proof, the limit is cos theta over theta. As theta goes to 0 is equal to 0. Well, over there I had h, but it doesn't make any difference. Um, I go ahead and divide all of this by theta, assuming that we are still in the f in the first quadrant. So I take this thing and divide by theta. This equation, say divide the equation by theta. So you'll have one half of sine of theta is less than one minus cosine of theta over theta 
and that is less than dividing by theta here I'll have sine of theta over 2 so here 2 is outside here 2 is inside now I said I let theta go to 0 of course theta is in the first quadrant we are letting it to go to 0 from positive angles what happens this is stuck between these two sine of 0 is going to be 0 and here sine of 0 again is 0 so both end of this thing is going to go to 0 so as uh, theta goes to 0 one half of sine of theta goes to 0 sine of theta over 2 also goes to 0 and the item is stuck between them that has to go to 0 as well so 1 minus cosine of theta over theta also goes to 0 this is for positive angles you can make a similar reasoning for negative angles as well and uh, for that case just as well as this case the ratio will go to 0 so that proves our claim that uh, this ratio at the limit is zero. So our derivations from uh, for sine and cosine are correct. Okay, uh, that was some uh, substantial mathematics we just talked about. You go ahead, make sure you can do the differentiation problems from this section. And good luck. And God bless.